Hey, adventurers! Are you ready to explore one of the most amazing cities in the world? A city that is full of history, culture, and beauty. A city that has something for everyone, from ancient monuments to modern art, from delicious cuisine to lively nightlife. A city that is called the Eternal City because it never stops to amaze and inspire. Yes, you guessed it. We are talking about Rome, the capital of Italy, and the heart of the Roman civilization. In this video, we are going to show you the top 10 things to do in Rome and a bonus place that will blow your mind. So buckle up and let's go on a journey to Rome with the Global Adventures. Number one, Trevi Fountain. The first thing to do in Rome is to visit the Trevi Fountain, one of the most iconic landmarks in the city and a must see for any visitor. The Trevi Fountain is the largest and most famous Baroque fountain in the world, and it features a stunning sculpture of Neptune, the god of the sea, surrounded by tritons and horses. The fountain is also famous for its legend, which says that if you throw a coin into the water, you will ensure your return to Rome. According to some estimates, more than 3,000 euros are thrown into the fountain every day, which are then collected and donated to charity. The fountain is located in the heart of the city, and it is always crowded with tourists and locals. It is especially beautiful at night when it is illuminated by lights. So make sure to stop by the fountain and make a wish. Number two, Palazzo Madama. The next thing to do in Rome is to visit the Palazzo Madama, a majestic palace that serves as the seat of the Italian Senate, the upper house of the parliament. The palace has a long and fascinating history, dating back to the ancient Roman times when it was a temple dedicated to Sibele, the mother goddess. Over the centuries, the palace was transformed and expanded by various noble families, including the Medici and the Barberini. It was also the residence of two famous women, Margherita of Austria and Maria de' Medici, who gave the palace its name, Madama, which means lady in Italian. The palace is open to the public on certain days, and it offers guided tours of its splendid rooms, decorated with frescoes, paintings, sculptures, and tapestries. It also hosts temporary exhibitions and cultural events. So if you want to see a glimpse of the Italian politics and art, don't miss the Palazzo Madama. Number three, Piazza Navona. The third thing to do in Rome is to visit the Piazza Navona, one of the most beautiful and lively squares in the city and a favorite spot for locals and tourists alike. The square has a long and rich history as it was built on the site of an ancient Roman stadium where athletic games and competitions were held. The square is famous for its three magnificent fountains designed by Bernini, the master of Baroque art. The central fountain, called the Fountain of the Four Rivers, represents the four major rivers of the world, the Nile, the Ganges, the Danube, and the Rio de la Plata. The square is also surrounded by elegant buildings such as the Church of Sant'Agnese in Agone, the Palazzo Pamphili, and the Brazilian Embassy. The square is full of life, with street performers, artists, vendors, and cafes. So if you want to enjoy the atmosphere of Rome and maybe have a gelato or a coffee, head to the Piazza Navona. Number four, Pantheon. The fourth thing to do in Rome is to visit the Pantheon, one of the most impressive and well-preserved monuments of ancient Rome, and a testament to the engineering and architectural skills of the Romans. The Pantheon was built as a temple dedicated to all the gods, and it features a massive dome, which is still the largest unreinforced concrete dome in the world. The dome has a circular opening at the top called the oculus, which allows natural light and rain to enter the building. The Pantheon is also a burial place for some of the most illustrious figures in Italian history, such as the painter Raphael, the king Victor Emmanuel II, and the poet Umberto Eco. The Pantheon is free to enter, and it is open every day, except for some holidays. It is a must-see for anyone who appreciates art and history. Number five, Vatican City. The fifth thing to do in Rome is to visit the Vatican City, the smallest and the most sacred country in the world, as it is the headquarters of the Catholic Church and the residence of the Pope. Vatican City is home to some of the most important and magnificent religious and artistic treasures in the world, such as the St. Peter's Basilica, the Sistine Chapel, the Vatican Museums, and the Vatican Gardens. St. Peter's Basilica is the largest and the most famous church in the world, and it contains the tomb of St. Peter, the first pope and the apostle of Jesus. 
The Basilica also has a stunning dome designed by Michelangelo and a huge square where thousands of pilgrims gather to see the Pope. The Sistine Chapel is the most famous chapel in the world, and it is where the cardinals elect the new Pope. The chapel is also famous for its incredible frescoes, painted by Michelangelo, depicting scenes from the Bible, such as the creation of Adam and the Last Judgment. The Vatican museums are one of the largest and the most visited museums in the world, and they contain a vast collection of artworks, from ancient to modern, collected by the popes over the centuries. Some of the highlights include the Raphael Rooms, the Gallery of Maps, and the Spiral Staircase. The Vatican Gardens are a peaceful and green oasis in the heart of the city, and they cover about half of the territory of Vatican City. They are full of fountains, statues, flowers, and trees, and they offer a stunning view of the Dome of St. Peter's Basilica. To visit the Vatican City, you need to buy a ticket online in advance and dress modestly as it is a holy place. You can also join a guided tour to learn more about the history and the secrets of the Vatican. Number six, Colosseum. The sixth thing to do in Rome is to visit the Colosseum, the most iconic and the most visited monument in the city, and one of the seven wonders of the world. The Colosseum was built as an amphitheater where gladiatorial fights, animal hunts, executions, and other spectacles were held for the entertainment of the Roman people. It could hold up to 80,000 spectators, and it had a complex system of elevators, trap doors, and tunnels to move the performers and the animals on and off the arena. The Colosseum is a symbol of the power and the glory of the Roman Empire, but also of its cruelty and violence. It is a place where history and legend meet, and where you can imagine the roar of the crowd and the blood of the martyrs. The Colosseum is open every day, except for some holidays, and it requires a ticket to enter. It is advisable to book your ticket online in advance to avoid the long queues. You can also join a guided tour to learn more about the history and the secrets of the Colosseum. Number seven, Roman Forum. The seventh thing to do in Rome is to visit the Roman Forum, the ancient heart of Rome, and the place where the political, religious, and social life of the city took place. The Forum was the center of the Roman Republic and the Roman Empire, and it witnessed some of the most important events and personalities in history, such as the assassination of Julius Caesar, the speeches of Cicero, and the triumphs of Augustus. The Forum is a vast archaeological site, full of ruins, temples, arches, basilicas, and monuments that tell the story of Rome and its civilization. Some of the most notable structures include the Temple of Saturn, the Arch of Titus, the House of the Vestal Virgins, and the Curia, the Senate House. The Forum is open every day, except for some holidays, and it requires a ticket to enter. The ticket also includes the entrance to the Colosseum and the Palatine Hill. You can also join a guided tour to learn more about the history and the culture of the Forum. Number eight, Spanish Steps. The eighth thing to do in Rome is to visit the Spanish Steps, one of the most famous and the most romantic spots in the city and a popular meeting place for locals and tourists. The Spanish Steps are a monumental staircase composed of 135 steps that connect the Piazza di Spagna at the bottom with the Piazza Trinita dei Monti at the top. The steps were built in the 18th century to celebrate the peace treaty between France and Spain, and they are named after the Spanish embassy, which is located nearby. The Spanish steps are also famous for their artistic and literary associations, as they were frequented by artists, writers, and poets, such as John Keats, Percy Shelley, and Federico Fellini. They also appeared in many movies, such as Roman Holiday, starring Audrey Hepburn and Gregory Peck. The Spanish steps are a beautiful sight, especially in spring, when they are decorated with colorful flowers. They are also a great spot to enjoy the view of the city and to take some photos. However, it is forbidden to sit on the steps, as they are considered a national monument. Number 9. Castel Sant'Angelo the ninth thing to do in Rome is to visit the Castel Sant'Angelo, a majestic fortress that stands on the banks of the Tiber River and that offers a stunning view of Rome and the Vatican. Castel Sant'Angelo was originally built as a mausoleum for the Emperor Hadrian, and it was later converted into a castle, a prison, and a papal residence. It has a long and turbulent history, marked by wars, sieges, fires, and executions. 
It also has a secret passage called the Passetto di Borgo that connects it with the Vatican and that was used by the popes to escape from danger. Castel Sant'Angelo is open every day except for some holidays, and it requires a ticket to enter. You can also join a guided tour to learn more about the history and the secrets of the castle. You can also climb to the top of the castle and enjoy the panoramic view of the city and maybe catch a glimpse of the Pope. Number 10. Trastevere. The tenth and the last thing to do in Rome is to visit the Trastevere, one of the most charming and authentic neighborhoods in the city, and a place where you can experience the real Roman life. Trastevere means across the Tiber, and it is located on the west bank of the river, opposite the historic center. Trastevere is famous for its narrow cobblestone streets, colorful buildings, medieval churches, and lively squares. It is also known for its vibrant nightlife, with many bars, restaurants, and clubs, where you can enjoy the local cuisine, music, and culture. Trastevere is a place where you can mingle with the locals and feel the spirit of Rome. It is also a place where you can find some hidden gems, such as the Basilica of Santa Maria in Trastevere, the oldest church in Rome, or the Villa Farnesina, a Renaissance palace with frescoes by Raphael. Trastevere is a place where you can lose yourself and discover the beauty and the magic of Rome. Bonus place, the catacombs. As promised, we have a bonus place for you, a place that is not for the faint of heart, but that is definitely worth the visit. We are talking about the catacombs, the underground burial chambers where the early Christians and the Jews buried their dead. The catacombs are located outside the city walls and they extend for hundreds of kilometers, forming a labyrinth of tunnels, chambers, and niches. The catacombs are a place where you can see the ancient art, symbols, and inscriptions that reveal the beliefs and the traditions of the people who lived in Rome. The catacombs are also a place where you can feel the mystery, the silence, and the sacredness of the people who died for their faith. The catacombs are open every day, except for some holidays, and they require a ticket to enter. You can also join a guided tour to learn more about the history and the secrets of the catacombs. We hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new about Rome. Now we have some questions for you. What are the things that you would like to do in Rome? What are the things that you have already done in Rome? What are the things that surprised you the most about Rome? Let us know in the comments below and share your thoughts and experiences with us. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, The Global Adventures where we explore the world and share our tips and experiences. We have more videos coming up about other amazing destinations, so stay tuned and don't miss them. Thank you for watching and see you next time on The Global Adventures. Ciao!